Hi. Stop, please. No, keep going. A little more. Yay! Yay all right. Oh, we love. I love all of you. Um, yeah. So my name is Jake Spurlock. I want to talk about building JavaScript apps with the WordPress JSON API, and I'm really excited about this because my whole talk was basically done already because Ryan McHugh did such a great talk about the JSON API yesterday, and then Nikolai did such a great talk about React today. So. I thought about just sitting down and not saying anything, but I might have a thought or two to add, but uh, some other great talks have already said some great things about that too. Um, like I said, my name is Jake Spurlock. Why is Jake on Twitter? Why is Jake on GitHub? Why is Jake on Facebook? Why is Jake? Nobody knows. Um, so hi, welcome, glad to be here. Um, I work for Wired Magazine. Wired is a tech publication that's been around since like 1993, I think. Um, they were bought by Condé Nast for part of a big media conglomerate, but we like to pretend that we're still kind of hip and independent in San Francisco, while the rest of the mother is in a big tall building in New York. Um, so like I said, I wanted to talk a little bit about the WordPress JSON API, and I, when I pitched this talk, it was literally six months ago. And six months ago is a long time in internet time, right? Like, that's a long time. And so when I pitched this talk, I wanted to come and talk about using Express, which is a JavaScript framework for building websites. It handles routing, it ha handles um, different things like that. It's a really easy way to build JavaScript, specifically Node.js apps, um, using, using Node. Uh, and then I wanted to talk about how to couple that with the JSON API uh, to build a Node-based WordPress website. So Node on the front end, WordPress is on the admin side for like managing content. Um, Node, for those that don't know, Node is a, it's a, Node is basically, so you have in Chrome the V8 JavaScript engine. That's what handles processing all of the JavaScript inside of Chrome. Uh, they, they abstracted that out of the browser and they said we could use this other places like on server side. So you can execute server side code in JavaScript and that's what Node.js is a um, is trying to do. And so I was trying to find a fun image for this and somebody apparently at O'Reilly wrote a book called What is Node? So anyways, if you want to know more, check out O'Reilly.com. Um, but so wait, what? why are we building JavaScript front ends for, face, or for Facebook, for WordPress? <laughs> Uh, doesn't WordPress do all of that front end stuff? And the answer is yes, it does. It totally works. Um, like Ilya said in his talk, WordPress can be kind of slow sometimes. To load a single page in WordPress, you're having to boot up and bootstrap a whole bunch of different stuff. All of this legacy code, you want to render your site.com, you're going to have to boot up and go through a ton of code just to render a page. Node can do that very fast by taking away a lot of the other stuff and uh, making your site just really, really fast. So like I said, Node is fast.js. And I just want to take an aside. Apparently you can add .js to anything um, because you can have PHP.js. This is a real project that takes PHP functions and then turns them into JavaScript. Has anybody used this before? It's like the handiest thing, right? If you're a PHP developer and you're like, how would I do this in PHP? And so you Google that and so there's php.js. And so like at some point, obviously there's gonna be wordpress.js. And I'm hoping that we can abstract this to other things like chipotle.js. And so you could like say, I'm gonna uh, do my create, um, my bowl here, uh, white rice, pinto beans, extra guac. Okay, I really just did this slide for me, sorry. <laughs> um, Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about building an app. So we have JavaScript, we have WordPress, and we want to kind of smash them together. And so this is kind of confusing because suddenly you're not just building a simple app. You're like, well, I just need to know PHP here. On one side, you're like, well, I've got PHP, JavaScript, CSS, SQL. And then you're like, well, I've got memcache because I need to like, you know, cache things and not have my site crumble to the ground. You probably have a Fastly front end or uh, Akamai or something like that, some kind of CDN. And then you're like, well, okay, now I'm going to get into this JavaScript stuff. And so I'm going to use like Mongo as like a middleware database. I'm going to use Express for the start of my site. I'm going to use Jade templating because it's super cool and it's really lightweight and it makes it makes things really easy. And I'm going to use React because it's really cool what they're doing at Facebook. And you saw Nikolai's talk today, and you're like, I'm going to do everything in React now. And, but there's some backbone stuff, too, to throw into it. And of course, you're using jQuery because jQuery just has to be used on every project, right? You just have to use jQuery. Um, so that's a lot to learn. So you kind of have, there was this whole divide, like who calls themselves a front-end developer? 
Anybody? And who calls themselves a back-end developer? A lot of people. Like in reality, like nowadays, you're just a developer, right? And it's, it's, it's kind of that, that, that line in the sand has kind of disappeared. Um, um, Chris Messina, who's a, <laughs> he's an ex-Googler, he wrote this blog post the other day. It said, the conventional themes between disciplines are fraying, and the set of skills necessary to succeed are broader and more nebulous than they've been before. These days, you've got to be a real polymath to get ahead. You've got to be a full-stack employee. So you can't even be a, like, a developer anymore. <laughs> you have to be an employee, which obviously is what you started out as, right? But you have to be a full-stack employee, and you can't just write code, but you also have to go to like business strategy meetings. You have to be able to talk about like high-level SEO discussions. You can't just say, like, I'm going to sit in the dark and write code because that's what I like to do in my underwear. Um, you have to like be responsible and stuff. Um, has anybody seen PHP CEO on Twitter or Medium? Um, he wrote this great rebuttal and he said, shout out to the classic stoking of fear about being left behind some arbitrary socio-technological curve defined by a bunch of 35-year-old Peter Pans in San Francisco. Uh, this one has excellent conversion rates. So I don't think you need to become a full stack employee, but... Maybe, maybe it'll help, I don't know. But anyways, in that original Chris Messina, it, he talks about becoming a polymath. And I thought poly means many and math means math. And so I thought that meant like knowing a lot of math. But the actual definition is um, having learned much, it's Greek. Does anybody know Greek? I don't. Uh, it's a person whose expertise spans a significant number of different subject areas. Such a person is known to draw on complex bodies of knowledge to solve specific problems. And does that sound like a developer? Like, I, that's, like, that's a developer definition. And so just to highlight complex bodies of knowledge to solve specific problems. That's what developers do. They use their knowledge to solve problems. But if you're a polymath developer, you use sometimes complex bodies of knowledge to solve problems complexly. That's what I think a problem is for development sometimes, is we have so many options. We have so many opportunities. And so we often look at problems and we say, how can we solve this in the most difficult way possible? <clears throat> so I want to talk... What I originally talk, came to talk about was using the JSON API to build JavaScript apps um, on WordPress. So at Wired, we have live blogs. Has anybody ever participated in a live blog, like seen one, like on The Verge? My favorite thing in college was like Mac Rumors, whenever like, like something new was coming out at Worldwide Developers Conference, go and hit refresh all day long. And when you're hitting refresh all day long and you have like 10 or 20 or 50,000 people, that's really hard on a server to do all of these new requests. Um, so Wired, like as an example, we can do a live blog. The Apple Watch live blog that we did a month or two ago, we had about 10,000 concurrent visitors on a single page of our website for during the live blog. And that's pretty normal. About So when you're thinking about this, you have to think, um, if we're just going to publish content, how can we do this in the most effective way possible? So you start like thinking, well, maybe we need to reevaluate how we do this. Are we going to publish content to WordPress directly and then use WordPress and some caching mechanism to prevent our site from going down? And so we thought, what about Tumblr? <clears throat> so has anybody used Tumblr before? You know what Tumblr is really good at? Doing things complex, no, not complex, very simple, actually. Uh, Tumblr is a very simple app. It does a few things very simply and very well. And so our editors, they like to go to an event, take their cell phones, and they can take a picture and post it to Tumblr. They can sit there and type out a little text message, post it to Tumblr. It's really simple. That's exactly what you need for a live blog. You're not writing you know, a 10,000 word opus about uh, the industrial design of post Steve Jobsy and Apple. You know, you're just saying, like, I really like these curves, and battery life is going to be terrible, and you know, stuff like that. Um, so we wanted a simple approach. So as a developer, we, we got, you know, like as a polymath developer, we sometimes want to do th something in the most difficult way. So we're like, well, let's create a new custom post type, and then we can use the WordPress app, and we can, uh, if we had a special tag, we could have it go into a custom post type on an admin hook or on an admin action or a publish action, um, or we could just publish to Tumblr. And that's kind of a simple way to do it. So this isn't to say that we don't write any code. We do write code, and we said, let's go out to Tumblr, and then we're going to use the Tumblr API to crawl all of the requests uh, using the Tumblr API, and then we're going to put them in a big, uh, we're going to save them to post meta, like, I, like on that line right there, update post meta. And we're going to save all of the content to post meta, and then we're going to use our JSON API to spit the content out to the JSON API. And so this is great. We have a nice, simple way to do this for our editors and for our users. Uh, this comes up with a problem, though. 
because if we have 10,000 concurrent visitors and we have them all set up on a script that's hitting the JSON API, and that JSON API is, they're gonna be hitting that every 15 seconds, we need to do some heavy caching there, or our big object of data can pull us down really fast. And so we're using Fastly, and Fastly has this really cool uh, cache header that you can do, it's called stale while revalidate, and it allows you to serve stale content while you're revalidating the content on the back end. And Zach Tolman, who is right there, would like to talk to you all about this at some point. But this is, was our solution that we came up, so we can serve stale, con stale content while we bring in new content behind it. So, on the front end, we look to React. React is a really slick way to update content. Like Nikolai's great talk today, like I said, I didn't want to talk a lot about this because I think Nikolai did a great thing. But the, the highlight that I want to talk about is React being stateful. This is from the front page of React and it says, in addition to taking input data, like a response from a JSON API, a component can maintain internal state data. When a component state data changes, like your request to the JSON API and it comes back differently, the rendered markup will be updated by re-invoking render, which is a default function that's built into uh, React. And so all we have to do is set up a little loop to fetch the content from the JSON API and then publish the content to the page. And then as we sit there and fetch it back and forth, as soon as it changes, it will re-render the results on the page and we have a live blog. So is this simple? I mean, kind of, yeah. We took this like complex idea of like needing to have a live blog, we needed to have it cached, we needed to be able to do all of these different things, but we broke it down into a couple of different things and it ended up just being nice and simple. Um, so, eliminated complexity, that's what that slide is. <laughs> um, uh, some of the talks have talked about imposter syndrome and I think that that's kind of interesting because as a, as a WordPress developer, I don't see myself really as a JavaScript developer. Like, I feel like there's a wall put up and it says like, you can know PHP and you can work on PHP but you're not a JavaScript developer. There's a special domain and there's a special conference for JavaScript developers. Like, you're a WordPress developer, right? When we do something like this, though, it's, we can look at this and, like, we can look for easy wins. We can say that this is an easy thing to do and this provides a win and we can help alleviate imposter syndrome. Um, the goal here, too, is to make code modular. We can break code into separate things and we can say, um, this is a big project, it's kind of complex, it has JavaScript sides, it has PHP sides, it has like cron side, it has all of these different things, but if we break up the project and we make it modular and we break thing, everything down into a little segment, um, it becomes an easy process. Make code simple. Um, <clears throat> Another quote here, this is uh, from a, a Medium article called Right Under the Influence. And just want to like say this for a second, like I think writing code is a lot like writing words or something. Um, he says, sober writers love to use fancy shit like semicolons. Nobody likes to see a semicolon. I see sobriety stains all over writing these days. I think, damn, this piece has a chance to be good, but the author is too busy looking at their pompous smile in the mirror. Sometimes when we write code, we're thinking, how can I be clever? Like, sometimes I think when I get done writing something, I'm like, this is the most clever thing I've ever written. And I have a big pompous smile on my face, because I'm like, I am so damn clever. But that's not how we should be, we should be writing. We should be writing. <laughs> differently. Hemingway had four rules that I think are very applicable to both maybe writing fiction and also writing code. I, first off, use short sentences. How many people have written a function that's like 900 lines long? Anybody? Yeah, right? It's probably a bad idea. Um, number two, use short paragraphs. How many people have super complex maybe classes? You know, kind of goes along the same way. Uh, use vigorous English, understand your language, understand functions, read the documentation, RTFM like was said earlier today. Um, be positive, not negative, and the most important rule is never have only four rules, because there's five. Um, because code is poetry, right? Anybody? <laughs> code is poetry, like that's what WordPress is, code is poetry. And we should write like we care, we should write like we give a damn, we should break things down into simple blocks. Um, we all love writing for WordPress. I read that, I saw this most amazing tweet the other day that said, how, how, one of the greatest things about WordPress, and I'm totally paraphrasing this, is like one of the greatest things about WordPress is how many people learn to develop by writing WordPress. Anybody? Like, I didn't go to school to be a developer, I went to school to make movies. And I'm totally a Hollywood blockbuster, you know? 
but I'm a WordPress developer. I learned how to do WordPress, maybe a lot of things the wrong way, but I think I'm getting better every day. Um, so like I said, that's kind of my talk. Thank you, and uh, code is poetry. Thanks. <clears throat>